For this example, we're going to use the function f of x equals negative 3 e to the x in a calculator to calculate the y values to two decimal places. And the x values that we'll use will be negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. So we're going to substitute these values into the equation. Our equation is f of x equals negative 3 e to the x. That will be negative 3 e to the negative 2, negative 3 e to the negative 1, negative 3 e to the 0, negative 3 e to the 1, and negative 3 e squared. Because e, if you recall, e is approximately 2.718, it's a little bit hard to do in your head, so we're going to use a calculator. Got our calculator here, and I'll type in negative 3 e to the negative 2. And that gives me negative 0.41, we're rounding to two decimal places, negative 3e e to the negative 1 is negative 1.01, .01, sorry, negative 1.10, negative 3e e to the zero power is negative three. Negative three e to the first power is negative 8.15. And then finally we have negative three e squared. And that's negative 22.17. And we want to sketch the graph, label the y-intercept, and at least two other points. So let's take a, pic take a look at the sketch of this graph. So we're going to plot the ordered pairs that we found. We've got negative 2 and negative 0.14, negative 1 and negative 1.1, 0 and negative 3, 1 and negative 8.2. One five and two is off of our grid, so I'm not going to be able to plot that. We want to label the y intercept. I can see the y intercept is here at zero, negative three, and let's uh label some of the other points on the graph. We've got negative 1 and 1.1, negative 1.1, and this one is 1 and negative 8.15. So we're going to be able to sketch the graph. You can see that this portion is leading up to that horizontal asymptote that's right on top of the x-axis, we have that horizontal asymptote at y equals zero, and this is the portion that is reflecting and going down to negative infinity. So we have a sketch of our graph, negative three e to the x. So we'll take a look at this example, which says, solve the exponential equation using the method of relating the bases by first writing the equation in the form b to the u equals b to the v. 
We're going to use this method of solving called relating the bases, and in some textbooks they call it the one-to-one -one property. And that method starts off by writing your equation in this format, b to the u equals b to the v. So what we want is on both sides of the equation to have the base being the same value. The equation that we have is 2 raised to the x squared over 4 to the x equals 8. So I want to try to write my equation in this format, b to the u equals b to the v, having the same base on both sides. So I'm going to take a look at the bases that I have. I have a base of 2, a base of 4, and a base of 8. All of those values can be simplified to have a base of 2. 2 already has a base of 2. 4 is the same thing as 2 squared. And 8 is the same thing as 2 cubed. So I'm going to write all of these with a base of 2, hoping that that will lead me to writing the equation with the same base on both sides. So 2 to the x squared is already having a base of 2. I'm going to change 4 to 2 squared. I need to carry down that x. And I'm going to change 8 to be 2 cubed. I need to continue to simplify. This section, there's a property of exponentials, which is called the power rule for exponents. When you have a base raised to a power, and then that's raised to another power, we can simplify by multiplying the powers together. So in this part, I've got 2 squared, and then all of that's raised to the x. I can simplify using the power rule and multiplying those powers together. So that would give me 2 to the x squared, over 2 to the 2x equals 2 to the third power. I'm going to continue to use properties of exponents. On the left hand side, I've got division and the expressions in the numerator and denominator both have the same base. So there's a property of exponents called the quotient rule for exponents. And in that property, if you have a base to a power divided by the same base to a power, you can simplify this by subtracting the exponents. So I do the numerator exponent minus the denominator exponent. That's what I have on the left-hand side of this equation. The bases are the same, and we're dividing, so we're going to subtract the exponents to get 2 to the x squared minus 2x. On the right-hand side, we still have 2 cubed. And now I'm at the point where I've written the bases to be the same on both sides of the equation. And now I'm going to be able to use this method of relating the bases or the one-to-one -one property to simplify this equation. The relating the bases method or one-to-one -one property says that if the bases are the same, then the exponents must be equal to each other. So this allows us to write down a simpler equation, x squared minus 2x equals 3. The exponent on the left-hand side has to equal the exponent on the right-hand side. This gives me a quadratic equation, which I'm comfortable solving. I'll move all the terms to the same side. That gives me x squared minus 2x minus 3 equals 0. I'll try to solve by factoring, but if factoring doesn't work, I can always rely on the quadratic formula. I have x and x, 3 and 1. I would need a minus on the 3 and a plus on the 1. I'll set each factor equal to 0, and I have solutions of x equals 3 and x equals negative 1. 
So the solutions to the equation 2 to the x squared over 4 to the x equals 8 are x equals 3 and x equals negative 1. Thank you for checking out my videos. Have a great day.